And we are back with this misclick special Dungeon World with Steven as our DM. And yeah. Special guest Christine and Peter, oh. she. Pucha. Pucha. Where are we? What's going on? Um, so you all are out in the jungle searching for herbs because uh, Sir Rizzo needs them to clean. Lady Moira needs them because she knows it's going to give her like social cachet with the other high civilized ladies. You know, Lady Roosevelt, Lady, what are your other ladies? Lady Moira? Lady Thatcher. Kennedy and Lady Thatcher. Kennedy and Thatcher. Uh, you know that like, you know, the ladies have been like dying for just like one hint of herbs for the last like three weeks. And <laughs> if you could find some, you would be like, everybody would can be coming to you. Well, That's I shall answer. find some star leaf for them immediately then. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you're 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 out in the jungle and like, you know, there's like vines hanging from the from the canopy above. There's like a bunch of little thieving monkeys who are like scampering through the trees, kind of following you around, you've noticed. Uh, you know, they 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 kind of follow you everywhere. But um you're near like a a, a clear pool that um, used to have a lot of star leaf around it. And um it, it suddenly strikes you that you haven't seen any for like, you know, 10 minutes of looking, and that's very strange. How do you feel about this, Lady Moira? Or rather, like, I, well, gu I, I guess. Uh, there's just so much grime and dirt everywhere. Well, you, you ruffians, just clear this stuff out of the way so we can continue. Are you telling that to your, to your companions? Yes. What do you look like, Lady Moira? Especially like, as I you're standing have... here delivering imperious commands to your companions, what does it look like? I am 65 years old. Okay. I have my very curly, well done up hair that's up in kind of this big thingy with it, uh, flowers in the back of it, like a little, you know, different flowers. Like Hunger Games style? Like a bee's nest or something? I don't know what either of those things are. <laughs> <laughs> Neil, does it look like this? I'm not looking at you. <laughs> oh, where's, your face? where's your face? There you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's that big, like, fluffy all yeah. over the place with, like, okay. flowers and shit in it. I have a, uh, not a not a corset, but, like, a, a waistcoat that is nice and tight around my, my abdomen. And one of those mm -hmm. big, like, bumpy butt dresses. That oh, a bustle. Yeah, a bustle. You've got a bustle. A bustle, yeah. And I have a bustle. And Bustles I have were my, very uh, in fashion in prehistoric times, don't you know? <laughs> I've got a, a brass handle on my little uh, maple walking stick that has tipped with silver. Yeah. And uh, I walk to the town like this. Like, are you wearing, like, really dainty shoes? Well, no. That would be inappropriate for going out in the mud. I'm wearing boots. Just just curious. <laughs> From the finest calfskin. Yeah. So, like, Rookie, you're, you're sort of the one who's leading people around searching for herbs. And, and you know also that it's been really hard to find them for a while. How do you feel about getting, like, you know, ordered around by this this lady Moira. Well, I have to deal with it um, because that's how I get the money. Okay. But actually, the the herbs are scarce because uh, the the tar in the in the forest is is growing. But mm -hmm. I I know oh. a secret location where the herbs are are flourishing. Okay, yeah. Where where is it? Is it nearby? It it's it's nearby, but you can't. It's not seen by just the naked eye. Okay, how do you see it? You have to um, have the vision of a <laughs> a spider. Ah, okay. Is there a specific spider in the forest that like is commonly found in this area? It's the uh, a tarantula. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so like, are you? I mean, you know, just glancing around here at this clear pool where the 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 star leaf usually is found, you're not seeing any. Do you want to tell your friends that you know of another place where you can find it? I'll tell Opal. Can you, what do you say to Opal to let her know about this? I'm like kind of like cocking my head back and forth and looking in the pool and kind of like sniffing. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It sounds like you're trying to discern realities. Mm -hmm. Can you roll 2d6 plus your wisdom? I sure can, Steven. 
Thank you. Uh, no, not 2d8. We want 2d6 plus my wisdom, which 15. I'm oh, sorry. Plus your whiz. My whiz. So that'd be a plus one. So that'd be an eight. Oops. Okay, so here on the basic moves sheet that I just popped up in Roll20 for you, you can see on, on discern realities when you closely study a situation or a person, definitely oh. studying a situation, you roll plus wisdom. On a seven to nine, so you got an eight, ask mm -hmm. one of those following questions. Um... What should I be on the lookout for? Okay, um, you, you're you like sniffing around. Uh, so interestingly, um, part of the way Dungeon World works is that I don't know everything about the world. You guys might know more about some parts of the world than I will, and you're, what, one of your ways of saying, hey, Stephen, I know something about this, is either spouting lore or discerning realities. Like if you think there should be a trap here, you can discern realities and kind of like make there be one. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, you're, you're asking, uh, what should I be on the lookout for? And uh, you're like you're like sniffing around, and um, you you're sort of like you catch this scent of like poo, and you're like poo. your nose wrinkles, and you like you've smelled this before, and it's those damn thieving monkeys, and you like turn around and you can see one just like very ever so gently climbing up Lady Myra's back and like slipping its hand into her little pouch. I it's, I it's go grabbing into, for the healing potions. I go into like a feline crouch. Yeah. And I try to pounce on it. Okay, um, roll a uh, roll plus your strength, please. Your strength bonus. So it's always two d six plus that thing. Or wait, yeah. no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is always two d six plus the bonus. Do you shout anything as this is happening? I go. Row! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just have the it comes to the same thing, my love. Nice. Awesome. Okay. Um, you can you can you can attack it. But uh, it gets to make an attack as well. Okay. So go ahead and, and deal your damage. What okay. are you using? A d8? Oh, what am I? No, I'm just like, all I want to do is jump on it, like with my hands and pin it ah, to the ground. And you're like trying a cat. to grab it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, like, you, you get it, but uh, it actually, like, so it's kind of like you're over by the water, right? Mm -hmm. And you look behind you, and there's Lady Moira standing there, all like, hmm, hmm. <laughs> and she's got this little monkey like hanging off of her pouch and it's got its hand in it and you're like wow and you go like leaping across the intervening distance and we see like the monkey like jump into the air off of the pouch this is in slow motion now for those of you following along and it jumps into the air and it's got a healing potion in its hand and it throws it up and you land smack dab on top of the monkey, just like slam. It slams into the ground. But another monkey swings down from the vines up above and grabs the healing potion. Lady Moira, what's your reaction to all of this? Oh, what? What's this? Get it off of me! Get it off of me! <laughs> okay, Lady Moira's freaking out. Um, Opal, what about you? You're a ranger. You've got, like, something you could do with this situation, I think. I put, um, so I take, I have both my paws on the monkey, yeah. I'm a human, though, just to reiterate this. Yes. And I call them paws. Um, <laughs> instead, I, I put a foot on it instead. I, like, okay. stand on it with one of my feet, and then I use my... Um, I have a hunter's bow. Yes. And I shoot at the monkey that has the potion. Excellent. Give me a plus dex roll. I should just copy-paste this. I will do that. Oops, oops, oops. Hold on. Sorry. You can just do uh, arrow yeah. up, Anna. Arrow up, and then it will... Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Okay, I All got right. eight. So you got an eight. So um, choose one of those detriments. You either have to move to get the shot, and putting you in danger, or you have to take what you can get and deal less damage, or you have to take several shots and reduce your ammo by one. I think I... I want to keep the monkey pinned under my foot so I don't mm -hmm. move, so I just take what I can get and do... Minus 1d6 damage. damage. Okay, so roll 1d6, or wait, it's 1d8 minus 1d6. Yeah. Do I do that? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so you deal one damage. So fortunately for you, like, these monkeys are super weak. Like, your arrow just goes straight through its eye socket and pluck! And uh, <laughs> it just starts falling, but there's actually a rock right beneath where it's falling to. So, um, Rookie, 
Can you catch this this healing potion in time? I can. I love to see you try. Are you just like <laughs> are you just like leaping after it? Are you trying to like transform into something that can grab it really quick? I'm running as fast as I can and I jump and in mid air I transform into a an osprey. Okay. Ooh. And then um my talons lunge forward. Yeah. And then I grab it by just the one nail. It just kind of gets the leather strap that's oh, around yeah. it. And, and it's like dangling dangling. just above it's the rock. It's just dangling barely. Whoa. Barely. I hope it works right out for you like that. Will you roll a 2 6 <laughs> plus your wisdom modifier? So I do 2d6 plus 2? You do slash r space 2d6 plus, plus 2. Yeah. Nice. Hey, look at that. All right, it happens exactly like that. Like, basically, when you turn into a, a hawk, you also gain hold. And I give you moves that you can just use. So I'd say as an osprey, then you can fly by spending hold. You can, um, you can just grab hold of something by spending hold. And you can strike a killing blow by spending hold. So uh, you can spend two hold, one to fly, and one to just grab the potion. Sound okay to you? Yep. Okay, you have one hold left, and you're still a hawk. So, um, yeah, all of the monkeys, they kind of freak out. Um, Sir Rizzo, what are you doing while all of this is going on? Uh, I take out my staff, and I just, like, bam, 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 like push the monkey away, and they come <laughs> next to me. And I don't yeah, try okay. to help anybody. I just look for myself, I'm like, bam, bam. Yeah, okay, okay, totally. There, there were like a couple monkeys around you, and you just like, sort of poked them off. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, while you were while you're um, while you're poking these monkeys away, you sort of notice like a, a foul odor in the air. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <clears throat> what's stinky? Uh, oh, it's I, stinky. Uh, it's Don't talk jungle. about it, that. It, when it, someone it. passes gas, we pretend it doesn't happen. Now. <clears throat> It, it smells really bad, Rizzo. Like, like it smells actually kind of. This needs to stop. Do I have like I, I take out my little like? Would I know how to make perfume? Oh yeah, like I always carry yeah, sure. my little perfume yeah. with me because of moments like this happens all the time in yep, the. Absolutely. What's the name of the slums or Stone Bottom slums? So Stone I'm, Bottom. Like, yeah. I'm ready. Uh, so I'm like. <laughs> and I put like some perfume on my fingers, and I just like go like this for a little bit. Uh, yeah, like, okay. Ah, oh, beach, beach, beach. Or I don't know. Like I pretend <laughs> it's like flowers, flowers. Great. Okay. I so um, the re no. the rest of you start smelling it now too. Uh, I was interested when they were asking about the smell, and I was yelling about it being poop, and no one was listening to me. So mm -hmm. I went uh, back to the monkey that was under my foot, and now I'm kind of batting it around and tossing it in the air and playing with it. <laughs> the one that died? Okay. Um, no, not the, the one that died. The, the one that I had. That yeah, that I caught. Oh, so okay, I'm like okay. dangling it by its tail and poking it and like. Yeah. Uh, would, it you, would you roll plus your strength to see yeah. how, how in control of the situation you are? <laughs> that monkey is probably fucking panicking. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely freaking out. Seven. Yeah, so like you bat it around and you toss it in the air and it grabs onto a vine and it starts swinging away. What do you do? I just kind of watch it with okay. half interest. Yeah, it's going away, but the, this, this smell is getting stronger. It doesn't smell like poo anymore. It smells like rotten eggs. Uh-oh. Could that be a gnoll? Could that be a gnoll? If that's a gnoll, I'm not gonna be happy. Those things are disgusting. I try to discern um, reality. I'm smelling around. Well, I I, I think that uh, that Stephanie was just trying to spout some war. Oh, was she? Yeah. So, Sir Rizzo, would you roll plus your intelligence? Is it just two d six all the time? Yep. Okay, two d six, and my intel is. Plus two. Okay, thanks. Eleven. Oh yeah, totally. Ooh. Let's see. So that means I tell you something interesting and useful about the subject relevant to your situation. Um, it's not a knoll. It's poisonous gas. Ah, <gasps> okay. It's it's poisonous gas is floating in from somewhere. But you know, being an incredibly cleanly person, <laughs> that you can you can disrupt the poisonous gas for a little bit if you wet cloth in water and drape it over your face. Okay. Okay, I'm like, water! Find water! Uh, You're next to a pond. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's right here! And then I'm like, I don't want to take my shirt. Uh, 
Opal, give me your shirt. <laughs> Opal, what do you say to that? Opal, do not take your shirt off. That is not the proper way to behave in public. <laughs> okay. As she, when she told me to take off my shirt, I had started to like rip off a piece of my shirt. But then when, <laughs> when Lady Myra told me not to, I'm like, oh. No. If we need I, to, I, and then I tried to grab, I tried to grab some of uh, Sir Rizzo's like cloak and rip it off. Oh, like, okay. I start grabbing for some. No, we I, have I facts. Go into touch my, don't touch me. I go into my bag of books and tear off some pages of paper. Okay, of um, you can spend one book in order to do that. All right, I take a use out of my book. Okay, and uh, create some papers for us to. Do use instead Wait, of cloth. I didn't see anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Lady, true. Lady, how do you know that? I'm but, hey, you if tell you them? need cloth, I have papers instead. All right, we need to cover our faces. This is the gas. This is the gas. Oh, yeah. And she's she's in an ox, so she can't tell us, right? She, can she talk to us when she's in? Uh, she can probably talk oh, in okay. some kind of screechy hawk voice. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so uh, me first, me first. Lady Moira, you're willing to like tear up one of your books to like get people to cover their mouths with some with water. water. Put it in water. Okay, yeah, I, you dunk the dunk the piece pages of paper in water and drape them over your mouths, and you're able to breathe through them because it's like really shitty prehistoric paper. But uh, it it does keep you safe for a little while. So what are you guys gonna do now? Um, Lady uh, Aruki, I think you mentioned you wanted to like try and go find some some star leaf in another location, right? Yes. So now I try to lead everyone away from the tars, yeah. the, the pits, because I know that the, the star leaf is in the secret location. Yeah. Um, then I call, I do my secret. I'm still in my Osprey mode because I'm yeah. trying to fly around to find um, my spider friend who can, who's the only one that can see I'm assuming that you're Location. flying above this poisonous gas. I am. Okay. The cloud is below me. I'm mm -hmm. not having to use the papers to cover up my nose. Yep. But how I communicate to the rest of the group is by, like, telepathically. So I can't actually talk to them, but they can hear me. Okay, cool. So I'm telling them to follow me. Then I call out to my spider friend. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's the only one that can see the entrance to where the, the star leaves are. Yeah, okay. So, um, like, you guys are, are following um, Ruki through the, the woods. And um, Ruki, as you're flying up above, like, you can see this, this poison gas just, like, spreading through the trees, like, billowing around tree trunks. It's almost like chasing our, our, our poor adventurers here. Um, and, of oh, course, your papers, your papers are starting to get incredibly soggy and fall apart in your hands. Like, you're, you're running through, like, a little gully right now, and there's, like, smoke, like, pouring in from all sides, and there's, like, tangled roots that are, like, threatening to catch you on your, you know, your, like, your clothes and stuff. Um, in fact, um, Lady, uh, Lady Moira, the, your bustle is so large that it's actually quite difficult to get through here. Can you, like, defy some danger somehow to, to get this? All right, I can defy some danger somehow. Um, what are you doing that... to avoid the threat from these roots holding you in place? Are you like just pulling through? Or are you trying to dodge them? I, I am going to try and convince my compatriots that they need to assist me and help pull me through this situation. Like they have to go and move the roots for me or like help me. Yeah. Whatever. I'm okay. going to try and use my charisma to talk my companions into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, like, notice, and you're like, get those roots out of my way, or whatever. Right. All right, go ahead, go ahead and roll uh, roll 2d6 plus your charisma. That would be one. Nine. Okay. Mm, yeah, um, they kind of look back at you, and, 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 like, they see this gas billowing right behind you. Um... I think that you're going to be able to keep your hair, but you're not going to be able to keep your bustle. Hmm. Or you can keep your bustle, but not your hair. Like they, they can well, take I care must of. must remain clothed. I could not take my dress off. It would be wildly improper. And the bustle goes under your dress. This this kind of fits with me oh, uh, teaching Lady Myra about the wild because yeah. she doesn't are you understand... the one who's like, okay, we can't do both of this. We have to. 
yeah, because she doesn't understand the life in the wild, and I kind of care about her because she taught me, you know, how to survive in the city. So mm -hmm. I just kind of go behind her and say, like, you need this ridiculous parcel taken off your butt. <laughs> And, and I tried to start to that to as the hiney or the rear end. I started trying to take it off, like. What do you, What do you think about this, Lady Moira? I, if that is how we must proceed, then so be it. And I try and take the. It's like a cage underneath the skirt, yep, right? Yep. You guys get it unfastened fairly quickly now. Um, Ruki, you see like plants and bushes moving around the, like the edges of this gully that your your friends are all down inside of, as an osprey. What do you do? I'm trying to get them. I'm trying to lead them into the clear path where I see some area where the, the poison gas is kind of... There's a small area where it hasn't reached, and I see the fresh air bubble that yeah. is is available to us in the pits. Mm -hmm. So I kind of span my wings like this to push the fresh air bubble down for them <laughs> to help them out. Okay, so you're and trying to, like, push back the, the poison gas, basically. Ex exactly, exactly. So I'm trying to span my wings as fast as I can mm -hmm. uh, to try to get them some fresh air, and... Okay, cool. Um, roll a... Um, wow, let me think. That feels like defy danger to me, but which one would it be? It's kind of defending, too, right? No, defending is more like physical combat. Oh. This is like there's a threat that's encroaching and she's I defying see. it. Um, I feel like that's using quick thinking. Like, that's pretty smart. So roll plus your intelligence to, to defy, defy that danger. Nine. Plus zero, mm. nine? That's not bad at all. Okay, that actually works out perfectly. So um, you're about to fly down and push back this poison gas, uh, Ruki, and you see creeping through the underbrush these bushes that are moving. You see a group of gnolls who are converging on your allies' position. <gasps> you can either go down and swoop down and push back the poison gas, or you can warn your friends and maybe get an attack off on one of the gnolls. And remember that one of your moves as an osprey is to strike a killing blow. I will swoop down and warn, or, or I'll swoop down and uh, give them fresh air, and I'll okay. use my killing blow for the gnolls. Okay, cool. So you swoop down and you start pumping your wings to like push back the poison gas. So the poison gas pushes back. The uh, lady, lady Moira, and Opal get uh, get the bustle off. Um, but uh, Sir Rizzo, you like you see like. Four gnolls come leaping over the edge of this this pit that you guys are down in, this this crevice, and they come crashing through the roots, and they're all like making gnoll sounds, and uh, they've got like wicked wicked clubs with like spikes on them, and they've got like war paint on, and they look ferocious. Rizzo, one of them comes running at you, and it swings its heavy uh, its heavy mace straight for your head. What do you do? Uh, I. Uh, I can defend, right? Uh, no, it's for someone else. Probably what you want to do is defy some danger. Oh, you defy want to, danger. Like, hold up a shield or dodge out of the way or okay, like, yeah, know, that's try what I to climb do. to high ground. So what are you trying to do? Uh, I'm going to... So he's, he's swinging at me? Is that yep. what you said? Uh, yep. I'm going to try to... I wouldn't roll because I wouldn't like the art. So I'm just gonna try to like use my staff because I guess that's mm -hmm. what I uh, I do the most. Use my staff and push myself away from the okay. danger. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Roll plus your dex to defy danger. Okay. Dex. Oh, it's just two six. Dang. Oh, nice. Okay. So Yay. this knoll comes and brings his huge mace like crashing down through the space where you just were, and it slams its mace into the ground. And you are completely fine. Um, and then I yell. I'm like, Gnolls! I knew it! I knew yeah, it! Yeah, yeah. What do the rest of you do? React to that. Uh, I cast Magic Missile. Okay, so you just like point at the first Gnoll you see and blam? Yes, I point okay. at the first Gnoll I see and Civilization, come to thee! Excellent. <laughs> and shoot my 2d6 plus 2. Yeah, plus your int. I oh, no! Okay, no. um... 
Yeah, so you, um, <laughs> your magic missile goes off and it strikes one of these gnolls. So roll, roll the damage for that. Is it 2d4? Yes. Yeah. Five. Okay, five damage. So uh, this the same knoll that attacked um, that attacked Sir Rizzo, you nail it for five damage, and and it, it just gets blasted back off of its feet, and its chest is like a smoldering ruin. But it stands back up, and you can hear it like breathing raggedly through like a hole in its lung. Um, but it like turns to glare at you, and two knolls jump down right like next to you um and one of them swings with its own mace oh no and uh Moira oh, actually, doesn't have any armor yeah, yeah yeah okay so um and it catches you upside the head dealing you two damage so it's kind of a glancing blow because you were like in the middle of casting your spell but you get knocked just a little bit um Opal, what are you doing in response to all of this? There's like four gnolls, two in the front, two by Lady Moira and yourself. Um, what do you do? Uh, as soon as I see, like, I can identify that there are gnolls, I immediately attack. And I extend my claws, by which I mean in cat language that I pull out my short sword and go to work. Okay, cool. Yeah, go ahead. Um, are you attacking the one that's right next to Lady Moira? Yes. Okay, go ahead and make, give me a hack and slash roll, plus your strength. Seven. Seven. Uh, okay, so that means that you you hit, but you also open yourself to an attack. So um, deal your damage. Do, do, do. Six. So you stab this knoll pretty good, uh, the one that's that's attacking Lady Moira, and it actually like crumples to its knee, but it twists just a little bit as it falls and it wrenches your sword just a little bit. You're trying to hang on to it, but the second knoll steps around Lady Moira and brings its mace like down on your shoulder. It hits you for two damage. You know, not I a big deal. Like really. that. Um, also remember to reduce the damage you took by the amount of armor you have. Which I never figured out. You have one. Just one. Yeah. Okay. As a ranger. Okay, so I took two, so I took one. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, Ruki, you have uh, you've you've beaten back the poison gas far enough for now. What are you going to do about these gnolls? There's three of them still alive. One of them just got stabbed to death next to Lady Moira. It's bleeding out into the the soil of the jungle. I will. Do I still have the health potion, or do I still? Yeah, have you were that? still carrying it. I'm still carrying it, but only on my right claw. Yes. So I have my left claw available. Yeah. I'm going to try to swoop in and grab one with the remaining claw uh -huh. and try to uh, use my momentum to, to push it into the tar so he gets, so we can slow him down even more. Now, you know, you're not actually around the tar pits. That's what's so strange about this. There's this poison gas, but the tar pits are actually quite a ways away from here. Hmm. Um, hmm. But... As an osprey, if you want to use your last hold, you could just grab him by the throat and then like peck out his throat with your with your beak and just straight up kill him. Do that. Okay. <laughs> now that would turn you back into a human. Oh. Because when you spend to the last of your hold, you revert to human form. Um. But a one shot kill. It's pretty nice. We'll have to kill them. <laughs> okay. His eyes. So you're going to swoop down and kill one of them? Yep. All right. Um, are you killing the one that's next to... Um, well, there's there's two in the front that are next to uh, Sir Rizzo, and there's one in the back that's less than, next to Lady Moira, and there's a dead one next to her. Which one are you targeting? The one next to Lady Moira. Okay, yeah. You just, like, there's flash just down. left by Moira, right? Yes. Okay. You just flash down and just like eviscerate this knoll's throat with your claws and your beaks. Just clap, and just like blood sprays out all over the place. The knoll gives a terrifying screech, <laughs> and it just dies as you descend on it. And like at, in the same one fell swoop, you turn back into normal-looking Rizzo. What do you look like, by the way, Rizzo? Uh, rookie. 
Or yeah, Ricky. sorry, Rookie. What are you looking at? Like, oh. I'm. You turn uh... back into a normal looking Rookie, not a normal looking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, Chrissy, what do you look like? And it's my name. <laughs>